Good afternoon. My name is Carly Rixum. I'm the executive director of the American Solar Energy Society. And I'm Lucy Stolzenberg. I'm the director of the Texas chapter of the American Solar Energy Society. And our project is the National Solar Tour. We've designed a platform um, to bring people who have solar together with people who are interested in adopting solar. So the National Solar Tour is the largest grassroots solar event in the world, involving about 150,000 participants nationwide, as well as 5,000 solar energy sites. Because solar is such a local deal, it's a way for people to get out onto their back porches, into their backyards, and talk about local incentives, local installers, local jurisdictions. So October is National Solar Tour Month here at the American Solar Energy Society. And we've developed this tool to bring together our big stakeholders, who are the tour goers, the tour attendees, the tour organizers, as well as the volunteers and the sponsors who participate in the tour. And the goal of this tool is to grow our membership. We are a nonprofit organization, so we'll be growing our membership um, as well as growing our organization through sponsorship. We're operating under the premise that solar is contagious. So people who have solar are the best advocates for people who want solar. So why do people put solar on their roofs? Well, because other people put solar on their roofs. Yale University published a study in the Washington Post um, in October that talked about this very premise that people who put the solar on their house because other people put solar on their house. So it turns out that the adoption of solar has less to do with population or wealth in a community, but has more to do with whether or not their neighbors have put solar on their houses. So the installation of one PV project within the last six months of a given area increases the average number of installations within a half a mile radius by over half, or almost one half. Oops. You seem to have frozen. There we go. <coughs> hmm. Help, Ed. So up until now, the National Solar Tour has been a dispersed conglomeration of local solar, solar, um, local solar tours across the country with little national organization. It just doesn't want to do that. There we go. There are more, there are more solar tours than just those two. <laughs> there we go. We got the cyclists going. And Green Energy Ohio. So our product is an interactive tool to bring these stakeholders together. In a survey that we conducted after last year's National Solar Tour, we found that um, the largest group of, of participants in the tour were in the rural communities. So it's our goal to bring this, these solar tours to the more fringe areas who have less adoption of solar. Also, in our survey, we found that um, over 50% of tour participants, um, the first three bars here, um, were likely to adopt solar after going on the National Solar Tour. I'll just keep doing it. Okay. So literally, what we've been working with in the past was a spiral notebook and an antiquated website. So we needed a better tool in order to bring together these stakeholders. Um, the current, the previous model really wasn't working. Um, we really weren't able to bring the education needed about solar to the audience that we needed to um, bring to. So it looks like I'm grounded here behind the podium. So uh, we were uh, 
getting requests from our, uh, the, our tour organizers around the country from years past that we really needed a platform to bring all the stakeholders involved uh, with the solar tour. And that is the tour organizers. It's the folks who've got solar on their businesses, on their homes, uh, in their communities, institutions, maybe on some veterans affairs building. We're really looking forward to that. And uh, of course, the folks who want to go on the tour, they can map my tour, and the volunteers wh who are the life uh, blood of any event. So, you know, we've got a lot of uh, forms here, and uh, you've seen a lot of forms today, but ours, I, th I think ours are the most exciting. This is the one for uh, the tour organizer of the DFW solar tour. Uh, it's an example of a very large solar tour that is part of the national solar tour. This tour had over 50 sites last year. I think they're shooting for 100. They had 600 uh, attendees. It's a big, it's an area that's uh, really seeing uh, serious solar adoption, and we're ready to promote that. This is for the tour hosts, the folks who have got solar. This particular uh, solar owner owns Apex Express, and uh, he has solar on his warehouse. And uh, he's able to fill this in. This will go to the tour organizer. He can show that he has solar PV. He's got uh, an energy efficiency upgrade on his building. He's got, uh, he was Sunrun, or excuse me, SunPower uh, provided the, the panels with Axiom Solar. He's got 22 kW and he's got uh, a couple of EVs. So um, he's got a carport with a small array on it. And these are the folks we are really looking hard at, which is the folks who are um, going on the tour. We want them to at least understand solar so that they're not afraid of it. We want them to understand the value of solar. We certainly want them to adopt solar. And here, they can choose the date they want to go on the tour, what kind of project they would like to see, uh, uh, what kind of uh, technology they're interested in, and uh, they can map their tour with their zip code and a, and a radius. Um, and the result, the happy result, is this uh, search that filters out that guides them to projects that they're interested in. So um, the happy result of all of this is, oh, those volunteers, and the happy uh, result is a solar tour, and uh, Tex and number 189 here uh, are real showstoppers. There's 35 people behind the camera on this one. So our revenue model is twofold. First, we want to build our membership. Um, it's our hope that through visibility of the tour, uh, we'll gain members, we'll be able to solicit to the email addresses that we collect um, through mapping the tour and other participants of the tour in order to grow our organization in that way. And then secondly, through sponsorship, um, uh, through soliciting to installers to be sponsors on the tour. And um, this is an innovative way for them to tackle soft costs in customer acquisition. Um, it's easy, no cost lead generator. And then um, we will be putting money back into the economy by defraying these soft costs. Right. Thank you. Thank you. But this is our competition. This is our competition. It's in October. <laughs> so this was our soft pitch. Are you ready? <laughs> Anybody? Right. Ju judges, do you have any questions? I'll say. <laughs> so, uh, what kind of impact can you have from this project? What kind of impact will we have for this project? Okay, so impacts for the project. Um, we're really getting neighbors out on their back porches and talking about local deals about solar. So when people, you know, if, pe if someone wants to go solar, they, they're gonna have very specific questions about who they're using, what the costs are, what the recommendations are, you know, what the neighborhood rules are. So by helping to answer those questions, we feel like um, we're really paving the way for, for people to adopt. And, I, and I'd like to add that it is just a free and easy way to installers to get out there in the community. That, I mean, four hours at a house where they installed solar with a happy homeowner, um, 
there, there's no better sales pitch than that. Do you think people are gonna open the door to their home based on like going out of like smaller groups or something like randomly people showing up? It, it, it can be random. I've done lots of solar tours, and the nice thing about this, about the solar tour, is that uh, tour goers don't actually go in the home. The farthest they get is perhaps the, perhaps the garage. I've done tours where you go in the home, and this doesn't have that liability. People are generally really comfortable with it. It's been my experience. Who goes on the tour? I, I guess my question is like, if I'm going to go on a solar tour, I'm probably already someone who's like got some interest in solar, or maybe I'm not. Like, who who are these people? Well, I can tell you that I uh, do solar tours in Texas, and I had uh, 400 people on a solar tour in October in a very small area with four homes in a sort of a rural subdivision type situation. It's just people who are interested in cutting back on their electric bills. They're uh, in Texas; it's a real issue with water. They're very interested in that, and they want you know they're you know the environmental issue is always kind of second. The financial issue is always kind of first what percentage of the people that go on your tour already have solar? And then the second question would be, for the folks that go on your tour that don't have solar yet, what, what portion of those people go and get solar? Well, typically the people that go on the tour usually don't have solar. It's, okay. It is my experience, is that they are folks who uh, are interested in solar. So we've got 31% in the fourth um, bar here yeah. already have solar um, of the solar participants. Yeah, and so I would say also the people who go on solar are the people who one day, someday, in 10 years perhaps in the future, might want to have solar, but they're aspiring, they're solar hobbyists, or just interested in solar. And then, of course, there are those who are ready to adopt in the next year. It could be useful for you guys to think about tracking the amount of people that actually get solar mm -hmm. in some reasonable period of time after they go, because that could be your impact metric too. Absolutely, yeah, we plan on doing a follow-up survey to um, the participants in this survey to say, okay, you said you would, did you? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.